Alright guys, in today's video we're going to be showing you how to beat the mid-blitz meta that you're probably facing in Madden NFL 21. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. Now, if you've never been to my channel before, never seen any of my content, what I do here on YouTube is I break down Madden 21 tips and tricks that are designed to help you get better as a Madden player in Madden. So if you are uh, if you are interested in becoming a better Madden player, I upload four videos every single day here on YouTube, one at 2 o'clock, one at 4 o'clock, one at 6 o'clock, and one at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And we also live stream every single night and answer your questions live. Um, and we also play with our Discord members. So if you haven't joined the Discord, you could do that below in the description. But we go live every single night on YouTube at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So I'd love for you to come hang out with us. Um, but basically, if you're looking to get better at Madden, what I would encourage you to do is go ahead and click subscribe. And I'd also encourage you to join our community Discord. We've got a lot of really good Madden players who are talking Madden 24-7 over in that community. All right, guys. So what I wanted to do today is break down a very probably controversial um, route combination. And I want to explain why it works. And I want to explain why you would use it. It's not something that you should spam. It's not something that you should run every play. It's the most simple route combination in the entire world. And you probably have not thought to use this against mid blitz. A lot of people are running the Giants playbook. Most pro players are. I'm actually in the process of writing a ebook out of the New York Giants playbook uh, as well. And we're going to probably release that in the next couple of um we're probably going to release that in the next couple of weeks. But what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about the mid-blitz meta that you might be seeing. And what people are doing is they're coming out, and we broke this blitz down on our channel. If you haven't seen it already, just shoot me a text, and I can shoot you the link to the video. My number is 812-216-3644. But mid-blitz, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to use two different things. We're going to run mid-blitz, or we're going to run Cover three version of mid blitz, right? That's pretty much it. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out in mid blitz. Now, the play that you're going to come out in, it doesn't matter what playbook you're in, right? I'm in the I'm in the 49ers playbook. It just needs to be some kind of spread playbook or spread formation. So it could be this empty base flex. It could be the empty niner here. And the play that you're going to want to use and you guessed it, is quick slants, all right? So whether it's from five wide, which I think five wide is the hardest um, hardest one to use. I like it personally from spread, and I think it's literally called double slant in the air raid. In the, and if you haven't picked up the air raid ebook, that's in the description below. But what we're going to show you here is how these are, and again, these are very simple routes. You don't need any specific play um, you just need a specific type of formation and what I mean by that is you need a wide receiver on both sides so it could be something like pistol pro, uh, pro like weak pro here strong wide off I would not recommend doing it out of strong close okay I would recommend it being a spread formation so that you can force their user to have to choose which slant he's gonna take all right so quick slants. So this is the most intimidating look. All right, no doubt that you face this. I've faced this, especially in weekend league. And what this five wide is going to do, and they're going to do something like this right here, right? Just throw everybody in the A gap, and they're going to send pressure. Now, the key with this is that they're going to eventually, they're going to drop people in zone, right? They may drop an outside backer into a vert hook. They may drop a defensive end into a hard flat. The reason this works is because you have two flat routes on either slot receiver. You want to look at the flat route first. Obviously, you want to identify where his user is going. Is his user going to the right? Then you throw left. His user goes to the left? Then you throw right. And you're not always going to know, right? But these slants are going to give you enough space to be able to hit them. So if you're facing mid blitz, all you're going to do here is just throw these slants. And they're inside pass leads. I personally I personally like to lowball them. If they don't get pressed, it's automatic. 
If they don't get pressed, it's automatic. If they press and they shade coverage over top and inside, which is what their tendency is going to be to do once you start running this, it's even more automatic. You'll see here you catch a slant, and you can get out and go and make big plays. So that's man coverage, right? Pretty straightforward. Both slants beat man. If they press coverage, press coverage is the one thing that I would say they're going to try to do that will give this the most um, stress, if you will. But it's not going to stop it. Once they come open, right, and they're not going to be able to hold their press for that long, you just got to make your decision quick. And once he gets that separation, throw it inside. And I like to lowball it just to keep it safe, right? Just low ball, pass lead inside. We'll show you this right here. Low ball, pass lead inside. Now, again, if you don't want to mess with maybe it getting deflected at the line of scrimmage, you don't have to. You don't have to low ball these. There's, that's not the key here. The key is just running them. But you need to hit them, and this is really important. You need to hit them right on the cut. If you wait till they're crossing the middle of the field, that's where it doesn't work. A slant is designed to be hit quick. So right there. Not, and let me show you when to do it wrong. This is where you're going to throw picks with this if you're not careful. So I threw it at the numbers. If I wait and throw it right there, that's where I'm either going to get sacked or throw interceptions. I have to get rid of the ball quick. So I have to make a decision quick, and I have to live with it. I'm either going to throw the left one or the right one. Bottom line. Okay? Bottom line. If they're both covered, typically that means they're either going to sack me, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with getting sacked. you got to be okay with getting sacked if you're a passer. Or what it means is they're in something like this. They're in some kind of defense like this. Okay. So let me show you what this looks like. So this is coverage. Watch. If I try to throw it, there's a defender right there. I can't throw it. Okay. So what you're going to do in that scenario is you're going to step up in the pocket and you're going to stay composed. Step up. Okay, stay composed. Now, if you wait long enough, you'll see that those yellows won't, they won't guard the slant when he crosses through. What I mean by that is if the right side slant crosses over to the left side of the field, by the time he gets to the left side of the field, the yellows are going to leave him alone. That's why it's important to step up with your quarterback. You'll find out if quick slants, they'll actually come up and guard the quarterback if they're in zone coverage. Let me show you what I'm talking about right here. So you see here, this is a basic cover, upper cover two defense. Cover two is probably going to do the best against this. And all we're going to do is we're going to climb the pocket, climb the pocket. You'll notice that, and again, that's also why we have that little tight end on a button hook. You don't have to do that. That could be your running back out of the backfield, right? It, it could be anybody. It doesn't have to be him. But this would be a common, this is a common max coverage right here. Something like this. And this guy being the user, okay? So something like this right here. Now, to snap the ball, what you're going to notice is, okay, I can't hit my quick reads. But if I climb the pocket, you notice how that yellow zone doesn't go back to guard him? He does not go back to guard him. You, you could do this on both sides of the field. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So once again, we'll drop him. Dropping everybody into coverage now. And I'm just going to climb the pocket. You want to climb the pocket right here, and then you're just going to pass lead open that slant. So if they go max coverage, you can wait for these slants to cross and they will still get open, right? Now, what would you say, what if they are zone blitzing you? So buck zone blitz, something like this, right? Um, what do you do in that scenario? Well, they're going to be sending the pressure, but what you'll notice is this slant, this quick, the quick pop slants are still open. What they're going to then do, guarantee it, is they're going to try to essentially bait you into throwing. So they're going to put three bird hooks out on the field and then blitz everybody else. And you'll notice here that he'll play it. You see that? That's why it's important to understand the flats. The flats, the flats, the flats. The flats are your backside thing. If they go with if they go with the um, the slant routes, okay, throw that and take your 20 yards. Take your 20 yards. Okay? That's why I think it's important to double flat them. Because what it's going to force them to do 
is if your slants aren't open, you can pass lead up these little flat routes and you're going to get separation. Okay. So this is a way to do it. Now, what they might do is they might go to something like this on you. This is not uncommon. They might go to something like this. Right? We're going to run max coverage from a man coverage perspective, and we're going to drop purples. You'll notice that these flats, the purples aren't going to get back. The, the purples aren't going to do anything to the slant route. Flat routes aren't going to do anything to the slant route. The only thing that's going to do anything to the slant route is if they, if they drop a, a hook. The thing is, they have to drop two hooks. They can't just drop one because you got two slants, right? So snap of the ball, they drop two hooks. Okay, now just wait just a second and just lob it right over the top of it. As you can see right there, it's going to get open. Okay, so these are the slant route, and I know it's very, very elementary. But I'm telling you, in my opinion, mid-blitz is elementary. It's elementary blitzing concept. We're just going to blitz six, right? Well, what quick slants is going to do for you is it's going to combat a very simple way you don't have to again you don't have like literally what i could do if i'm let's say i'm let's say I'm, i don't have a slant play it's sometimes even better to not because you're going to hot route them and they're going to go deeper like i could just run this okay so cover zero um the meta of cover zero to me is especially from a press perspective like even if they were to run let's say that let me jump over to uh cover two man so let's say they run like man to man like press okay the slants are just simple ways to beat man that's all it is and you see people running slants all the time motion slants this year is the hot thing in my opinion, just running a simple slant route from a spread set, because in my opinion, if you're going to play spread, that the, the defense that spread, in my opinion, has the hardest time beating would be a press man-to-man -man coverage. Well, now you don't. Now you have this opportunity right here. So I would encourage you to test this out. Again, You this is primarily a spread thing. I wouldn't do this from compression. You can try to do it from compression. I don't think it's going to work the same because the, the user – the key here is we don't want them to be able to use her both slant routes. We want them to only be able to use her one. Okay? If they can only use her one slant route, that's what makes this effective. All right? So that is, um, again, very basic concept. We expand on the spread offense in our ebook. We have over 125 pages of material. We have one play touchdowns against every coverage that you will ever face that we can break down for you in our ebook. So this is just a very small introduction, but if you're looking to run a spread offense, we wrote an offense based on the air raid offensive system uh, in real life. And we took it and we understood it and basically applied it into the game. So if you want to pick that up, we've taken people and turned them in from, you know, 200, maybe 100 yard game passers to 400 and 500 yard game yards per game passers they've been winning their franchises people have told me that this is the best 25 dollars that they've ever spent on an ebook so i'm just going to encourage you right now if you haven't picked up the air raid offensive guide that link is in the description that you can add this little concept right here into that guide and merge the two we have a ton of other stuff in the guide let me tell you we talk about mesh mesh post cross um we talk about four verticals we talk about shallow cross y corner um z spot and go all sorts of different things so i would encourage you to check that out as well um if you haven't already and all you gotta do is pick it up and link in the description below but and then last but not least guys if you haven't joined my text message membership it's completely free to do that and every single week we break down exclusive high level madden tips for free for you to our text message members so we typically take some kind of high level thing maybe it's the gun bunch maybe it's the big nickel over g maybe it's the minnesota vikings and the single back trio right we do those kind of schemes for you every single week as well in that text message membership so typically those videos are 45 minutes to an hour long of me going really really in depth and really really high level on some concepts in madden so want to encourage you to pick that up but other than that guys we will be live tonight at 10 o'clock p.m eastern time thank you so much for watching today's video and if you have any questions just shoot me a text message my number's in the top left corner it's also in the description of every video that i do thanks for your time